Okay, so if there's anyone new coming here, um, whenever I do something like Star Wars or comic books or anything just with a huge following in the geek community, I tend to give my overall thoughts very early on and then I have a big, big spoiler section. So uh, there'll be breakpoints in between. So if you want to skip the spoilers, you can skip them, okay? Um, anyway, yeah, there will be big spoilers on this. So, yeah, um, right now... Uh, Star Wars Obi-Wan Kenobi, um, or Obi-Wan Kenobi, sorry. Um, uh, these first two episodes, I think I am going to give them an A. I think they've done a really good job at world building. Uh, Ewan McGregor does a great job performing. It's done, a, I mean, everything seems really good. Um, probably if you're in this for a lot of action or something like that, if you're used to, say, Mandalorian or even Book of Boba Fett, you're going to be a little disappointed. There's not a lot of that, however, there is one, without getting too far into a spoiler, but uh, there is one scene right at the opening that, uh, given the events of the past week, might um, rub some very sore spots. So, you know, again, overall, though, still very enjoyable. I think it's doing a good job of, like I said, world building in this one, and I am eager for more stories. So, yeah, that's why I'm giving it an A. The Star Wars Trilogy Special Edition is back on the big screen. And to celebrate, Taco Bell has seven exciting Star Wars collectibles for $1.49 each, like Darth Vader disappearing here, Trilogy Puzzle, Millennium Falcon Gyroscope, and Cloud City Theater. So see the Trilogy, and get all seven Star Wars collectibles for just $1.49 each, only at Taco Bell. Okay, again, this is the big spoiler section, so uh, skip to the following point if you don't want to get spoiled on these episodes. Okay, so, alright. Um, I guess we got to touch right off the bat with what happens early on in this. Uh, we get a uh, fairly sizable recap of the prequels, so you should probably be familiar what goes on there. Um, and then we get a very brief interlude where we see Order 66 and the Siege on the Jedi Temple including a bunch of Padawans getting attacked by the clone troopers. And, yes, they are getting shot. So, again, given what's happened this past week, that might not be the best start for this show, unfortunately. I, 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 I You can't really fault them for it. They couldn't have known that what was going to happen this week would happen, but, uh, yeah, still, it's a little awkward to have to start that up. Uh, but from there, we jump ahead 10 years to Tatooine, where uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi is living, you know, as a hermit. Uh, he doesn't even have a house. He lives in a cave and makes deals with Jawas and kind of works at this sort of meat processing facility where uh, what kind of looks like a sand whale, a massive sand whale, is just being hacked up for its meat. And he's cutting off little pieces to keep for himself and bring back to his home and earn very meager living because there's no union and they're just worked to death. Yeah. And of course the boss, because this is a, um, a crime boss ridden planet that, uh, you know, they're not really paying their workers very well. <laughs> and they will occasionally just dock wages for the hell of it. And that's what's going on there. But then uh, the Inquisitors arrive because they have the sneaky suspicion that there's a Jedi here. And there is, but it's not just Obi-Wan. In fact, it's another one named Nari who uh, assisted a bartend, a barkeep who was getting uh, beat up for protection money. And unfortunately, it's like that sort of alerted everyone to the idea that, hey, there's a Jedi here. And, you know, there's a group of Inquisitors that come down. There's the Grand Inquisitor. And the other principal one is uh, Reva. Uh, and she is this one who's obsessed with finding Ben Kenobi. And she would rather try to torture this guy to get information out of him, or torture people to get information trying to locate Ben Kenobi, or Obi-Wan Kenobi, to be more precise. Um, and, you know, just, you know, again, she's, and she even rubs the other Inquisitors the wrong way. That's like, hey, no, no, you know, you gotta be, you know, deft with this or else you're gonna rile them up against us and then, you know, more hell's gonna break loose. We don't want that. You know, you want things to be kind of nice and orderly. But it's just not working. Yeah, it's obviously not working with her, but there's another... We'll get to that when we get to there. Um, and from there, uh, you know, 
eventually Nari winds up encountering Obi-Wan as he was sort of uh, eavesdropping on the Lars family from a distance. And um, Obi-Wan says, look, just bury your lightsaber, lay low, don't do any, you know, I, yes, I know there's the Jedi Code, but right now the Jedi Code is not good for us. If you want to live, you know, just you know, keep your head down and don't attract attention to yourself. And, you know, the guy doesn't adhere to it, and the next, in a couple of days later, he's strung up in the middle of the Anchorhead Square, um, the town of Anchorhead. Uh, so, you can kind of see that. And also, uh, there is another meeting between uh, Obi-Wan and uh, Owen Lars. And, you know, Obi-Wan said, hey, you know, Luke's getting to the age where he should probably start getting trained. And we had this deal, and I was like, you know, no, we're not doing that, because I remember what happened to his father, and that's not going to happen to him. And earlier, uh, uh, Obi-Wan made it, you know, because he, he bars with Jawas, he finds this kind of old wrecked uh, toy model plane that's actually the, it's not quite a plane, but it's a model spaceship that Luke was actually playing with in Episode Four. if you see him when he's uh, cleaning 3PO and uh, R2 up after they've been purchased. And he goes, you know, he's still he's playing with it, he goes, ah, Biggs is right, I'm never going to leave this place. And so, uh, it's that, it, it's, yeah, that toy. So you, you kind of see, well, he tries to give it to Luke, but Owen doesn't want it and says, hey, you know, don't bring this here. Like, you're going to fill his head with ideas. I need him on the, I want him to stay on the farm. Yeah, and at that point, the Inquisitors actually arrive in Anchorhead and, uh, they spot Owen and seem to know who he is. Like, they know the name. I mean, whether or not the connection to Anakin Skywalker, I'm not sure, but it is one of those, hey, you know, do you know anything? Do you know anything? And he doesn't sell Obi-Wan out, but he says, but it's kind of under the intense threat that they could come for his family. And he said, look, I'm not trying to protect you. I'm trying to protect Luke. And... That was kind of what they said, and that's kind of what happened there. And it's then that the actual plot of the series starts. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, it's not just only one on Tatooine. What happens is we then jump to Alderaan, where we see a very rambunctious and young uh, Princess Leia uh, trying to avoid her royal duties, for lack of a better term. Uh, you know, having to meet another gathering of other Organas from all, another uh, royal contingent from, I think it's another planet, but they're her cousins, basically. And uh, she sort of mocks because it's known that she's adopted, and, you know, she doesn't feel welcome there, and she'd just rather venture on her own. And, of course, uh, that in turn gets her kidnapped by a group of uh, bandits led by a guy named uh, Vect. Vect. Oh, boy, I... <laughs> Let's see, I got this uh, da, da, da. Oh, a little too far, and it's... Oh, no, wait. Uh, sorry, it's Vect Necru, sorry, uh, Necru, who uh, proceeds to uh, take her to the planet Daiwu. However, uh, the Organas did manage to at least track the ship down to some location, and it's there that they send a radio message to Obi-Wan to, like, hey, help us, Obi-Wan Kenobi, you're our only hope. And he's like, no, I can't do this, I can't, again, I, I'm trying to lay low and not get detected here. You know, if I do something that attracts attention to myself, you know, bad things are going to happen. But they're like, hey, you helped us out, we helped you, you, you know, come on, you owe us this, at least. And finally, even Bail Organa even travels to Tatooine for the sole point of, again, kind of cajoling Obi-Wan into taking this. And that's kind of how episode one ends, because yeah, it ends with him leaving. Uh, and uh, back to Necru, uh, played by Flea of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. I can't remember if I mentioned that. And it's from here we go to episode two, where Obi-Wan gets to Dai Wu, and... Uh, he's trying to ask around for as much information as he can, and some kid seems to entertain the notion that he's a Jedi, and he says, hey, I know a Jedi who could help you, and uh, takes him to a guy named Hodge Ursi, who is played by, or Haja Ursi, sorry, Haja Ursi, played by uh, Kamel Namjiani, 
who is not a Jedi. He's just a con man who uses magnets to attract a lightsaber so it looks like he has the Force. And he's basically using it to ferret people off of this planet because it's, you know, even worse than Tatooine in the sense that it's just nothing but crime lords in this place. And uh, to the point that even Corellia, the crime lord, lord written planet from uh, Solo Han, uh, where Han Solo is from the yeah, Solo Star Wars story, is actually a preferable place. So he's trying to get them into at least somewhat more ideal locations than... Uh, <laughs> than where they're at. Then um, from there, you know, it's kind of at this point that again, uh, it turns out that uh, Reva, the Inquisitor, has arranged this kidnapping for the sole purpose of luring out Obi-Wan and when the other Inquisitors begin to question her about it, like, hey, what's going on here? How did you, why are you doing this? Like, you know, you, the Grand Inquisitor is in charge and the Emperor is in charge like, you're not supposed to be doing this. You, and they even say she's beneath us. And I believe that's because the actress is transgender. So we have her playing a type of character who's being disrespected for who she is. And that she came from, quote, the gutter and she's not of the Inquisitors. And um, if you're not familiar with what the Inquisitors are, they are uh, Padawans who basically sold out to the dark side. They're not full apprentices of the Sith exactly, but... You know, these have some force abilities, and, you know, they're trying, and so, like I said, they sold out to save their skins, basically. Um, however, as this is happening, um, Obi-Wan has located uh, Vecta Necru, uh, uses a spice bomb earlier, uh, that he had acquired earlier, to basically put them all in a trippy haze, so that he can grab Leia and get out of there, and they're trying to make their way, but... Leia kind of keeps running off and being a little too rambunctious and not understanding that Obi-Wan needs to lay low and not draw attention to himself, even though he says he's a Jedi. She doesn't understand, and she's like, well, why can't you just fight these guys? Why can't you just, you know, get rid of this? And you also get the idea that she doesn't want to go back to Alderaan because she doesn't feel welcome amongst the, uh, the elite of the planet, basically. And they said, you know... She doesn't want to be a senator. She she actually wants to fight, and it's like, well, yeah, but you kind of need to do it within the system to get out in order to start fighting it. You know, we're I think that's where the big story arc is going to happen here. And uh, as this happens, uh, Reva goes into business for herself and puts a massive uh, bounty on uh, Obi Wan Kenobi. Puts his picture out everywhere, which. All of these bounty hunters in the you know on the planet see, and so now they can mark them, and that leads to a big shootout where Obi Wan has to use the Force finally to save Leia after she inadvertently falls over a ledge, and you know she's willing to be a bit. And at this point too, uh, also Haja Ursi sees it and he says, "Okay, I can see you're maybe a bit more legit than these other guys, you know." They're putting the whole planet on lockdown because of this hit now that's on you. So we need, to, you know, if you need to get out of here, you need to take this cargo plane rather than a normal transport. You need to get, take it to these coordinates. They'll route you to Alderaan. So, yeah, mention my name. They'll route you to Alderaan safely. And then uh, shortly after Obi-Wan and Leia leave, Reva comes by and kills him, kills uh, Haja, and take, extracts the information as to where they're going. And she starts going off after them. There's this big uh, stare down on the platform. But as that happens, uh, the Grand Inquisitor arrives and he gets into an argument with Reva, who immediately kills him, runs him through with a lightsaber. And that's. And, but it enables Leia and Obi Wan to escape. And that's pretty much how the episode ends. Um, like I said, uh, really good action throughout it. Obviously, a, a bit uncomfortable at the beginning. Uh, I think it's, like I said, it's a lot more world building in this case. I mean, the fact that most of the episode is basically just exposition and the actual plot does not get rolling until about the 30 minute point. Um, you know, probably as why they needed to release both these episodes at the same time. Uh, I don't know why they needed to release this on Friday. It could have released this on Wednesday. I think it would have worked just as well. Um, yeah, so yeah, again... Still, though, like I said, really enjoyable. I am looking forward to these next uh, episodes that are coming up here. 
And yeah, so uh, we'll wrap things up after the next break here. Sir? Hey, careful. You're gonna have to check that. Okay, so the next video is going to be the random trade review on Quantum and Woody Volume 1 Clang. Uh, after that, okay, this is where things are going to get a little weird. Um, I will be doing Obi-Wan in the uh, two episode chunks because it's a six episode series and that's kind of how that's going. Uh, also, uh, Ms. Marvel will debut around that time as well. In fact, Ms. Marvel debuts on June 8th, which would be around episode 4 of Obi-Wan Kenobi as well, I believe. I think Obi-Wan Kenobi is on Wednesday as well. Uh, they are not doing the two episodes of the first week, though. They're at, le at least the last report I checked said it was only one episode. So, yeah, we'll get the, <laughs> I guess the first episode of Ms. Marvel. I will probably do that in two week intervals after at least, and then, and then we'll get the final episode, I guess. Um, yeah, I know it's weird because they didn't do it. They're not doing the two episodes, so that's where I'm getting a little crossed up there. Again, at least the last report I saw said they weren't doing the two episodes the first week. They're only doing one. So yeah, um, and then I don't think I'll do weekly reviews uh, anyway. Uh, and. Uh, also, around that time will be the uh, WWE Hell in a Cell recap and review. See you all next time. Hey guys, remember, you can help support my channel at patreon.com forward slash sleepy time for cat productions, where you can help request a movie, even if it's something like, say, Sonic the Hedgehog or the next Purge film. I'll review it.